It's time for me to say things in an unscripted vlog. As you have no doubt surmised by now, when I was a kid we had a lot of Disney movies on VHS, and one of my favorites was The Rescuers Down Under. Now I wasn't consciously aware of it at the time, or if I was I didn't really know how to articulate it, but I really identified with Bernard, the kind of shy, put upon, normal mouse who keeps getting thrust into adventures and keeps getting interrupted, and there was, there was a lot in that character that resonated with me. Cut to several years later. One year for Christmas, my grandfather gave me a two-disc CD set, The Best of Bob Newhart Stand-Up. Before that, I mostly knew Newhart as the voice of Bernard the Mouse. I was aware he was a comedian, but I hadn't really heard much of his stuff. If you're around my age, it's quite likely that your first exposure to Bob Newhart was also Bernard the Mouse in The Rescuers or The Rescuers Down Under. If you're a little younger than me, your first exposure to Bob Newhart might have been as Papa Elf. If you're a follower of the internet review community, you might mostly know him as the guy who had that sitcom that the Brad Tries theme came from. But of course, Bob was so much more than all of that. Do yourself a favor and just search Bob Newhart on YouTube. You're pretty much guaranteed to find something hilarious. And I listened to that CD, and immediately Bob Newhart became my favorite stand-up comedian of all time. And he has yet to be topped. And that's not meant to put down the numerous other comedians I adore. I mean, certainly several have come close to my favorite of all time. But Bob's stuff resonated with me in a way that hasn't quite been matched yet. Aside from just making me laugh, one of the ways a bit of comedy resonates with me is when it makes me go, I thought I was the only one. I thought I was the only one who saw things that way, or I was the only one who knew that reference. And... All of my favorite comedians and comedy programs, like Mystery Science Theater and Community, have an element of that in them. For Bob Newhart, it wasn't just the material that made me do that, it was his entire persona. If you've seen enough of my rambling unscripted vlogs, you might have noticed I have a tendency to stammer from time to time. So does Bob, and he managed to own that, and work it into the character, and make it funny. The one-sided conversation shtick that his stand-up is famous for allowed him to be the straight man in a comedy duo while being the only person on stage and still be getting the biggest laughs you can imagine. And of course, the funny straight man act served him well when he headlined two successful sitcoms, which is almost unheard of for a single actor. The whole idea of the straight man getting the laughs with straight man reactions, Newhart owes a lot to Jack Benny from that, but Newhart was the one who made it expected on television. You know, without Newhart on his shows, we probably wouldn't have Dave Nelson on News Radio, or Tim Canterbury and Jim Halpert on The Office, or uh, Ben Wyatt on Parks and Rec. One of the things Newhart excelled at was being the only sane man, but without being judgmental or curmudgeonly about all the craziness going on around him. His persona as this straight-laced guy who's just a little out of touch, the joke isn't to make fun of him for being out of touch, He's inviting us to be a little out of touch with him and just laugh and delight in the absurdity of the world around us without casting aspersions on that world. So this past Friday, May 30th, I finally got to achieve a dream of mine. I got to see Bob Newhart perform live. He was performing in Boston at the Wilbur Theater, where I've previously seen Wootstock and Cinematic Titanic, so I got to meet quite a few comedic influences there in the form of Mystery Science Theater writers. And I knew that I just couldn't pass up the opportunity to see Bob Newhart in person. But a tiny bit of me was trepidatious about it. You know, seeing a massive, larger-than-life legend in person after doing this for so many years, sometimes they tend to not be as good as they used to be, shall we say? Um, they, they tend to lose touch with, with the cultural conversation, and... Uh, some people just stop being funny after a certain time. Of course, the advantage Bob had was that part of his shtick was being not quite in touch, but part of his shtick was also not being curmudgeonly, and I just hoped that he could hold on to that in his age. But I went to see his show, and sure, not every single joke was the best joke I had ever heard, but I was delighted that, for the most part, he still has it. He's a little quieter and a little slower than he used to be, but he's still very, very funny, and when he would go into doing other characters when he was telling stories, he would just he would just have that same energy he's always had. He only did one of his classic bits, the driving instructor, and everything else was... It probably wasn't new material, but it was mostly stuff I hadn't heard before or that hadn't been recorded before. 
In fact, I hesitate to even call it material. It was just sort of conversational. You know, he told some jokes and he told some stories, but it was mostly like spending an evening with your friend's really charming grandfather, who happens to be a legend who tells stories about hanging with Sinatra or Ed Sullivan. And while there was no official meet and greet after the show, I did wait around in the rain with the other devotees, and I got to meet Bob Newhart. We all lined up in the alley by the door, and the big security guy was like, all right, he signs one item, you shake his hand, no pictures, no video, move on. We were still excited. I got to tell him just what a profound influence he was on me, and I got him to sign my copy of his book. I need to lock this in a very secure display case and get myself a new paperback copy for actual reading. They say never meet your heroes. I've always ignored that advice. I've met several of my heroes and influences over the years, and so far I have not been disappointed with a single one. Granted, I never spent enough time with them to know if they were secretly terrible people who were just really good at putting on an act for their fans, but... I came away from each interaction glad I met them. And Bob was definitely my most rushed and briefest encounter with the hero, but it's always going to be one of the most meaningful just because he was one of my most meaningful comedic heroes. He was the guy who proved to me that even seemingly boring people like myself can secretly be really, really hilarious. And even if he had somehow turned out to be a raging asshole, I still would have been really, really happy that I got to shake the hand of a man who not only gave me so many laughs out of the years, but helped shape my perspective on what comedy can be. So thank you, Bob. I hope we get to meet again someday.